It's Ken Bruce with DirtTrackDigest.com. We're here at Ryan Godown, winner of the King of the Big Blocks here at Bridgeport Motorsports Park. Your first Super Dirt Series win. How the hell does that make you feel? Oh, it's been a long time coming, man. I've been trying at this one of these races for a long time and didn't think I'd ever get one. I told my son this morning, I says, this is about the best chance we're going to get. Um, you know, we've ran some good runs at other places, but your home track, you should be good at, right? And that's what we want it to be. That's why we came Saturday. So, um, you know, we fell through the gate. We're quick all night. Just, you know, track through us real curveball how bitey it was. But it actually worked out good because by the time it blew off, it didn't hurt tires. And, and uh, you know, I thought the, the race, for me, from my perspective, I had to back it up. I probably did a too fast pace too quick, right? And that's something I got mad at myself early in about middle of that race i should have took it maybe a little easier but you just never know where these guys are and you know we're clicking off said well you know we keep clicking off lap cars and you know see what happens early in the race i mean you start i think you started what 10th 10th, 10th and you were up to in the first caution two laps in you were up to fourth already you got some good bite there early on well, you know, from running here, when they do water the track and it gets greasy, you know, we kind of know the areas that be greasy and aren't. So I kind of had a little bit up on some of them guys that don't know where to, where it's, it, some real top lane was really greasy to start that race. But I knew a couple lanes that I could get to if it was open. And it kind of like the seas parted them first two laps. It was pretty crazy. And we were able to get there. I couldn't believe right through the middle. I said, man, it must be really greasy on the bottom where they were trying and, and obviously toward the top. So it was just, uh, and then you get there, right, and you don't want to over, you know, get too aggressive either. And then you're running down Yankowski. Uh, what do we do? Do we just be patient here, go? You know, you got all these guys, you know, these good guys here, and it's hard to hard to stay back and lay back, you know. Yeah. You know, Earl, on the restarts, you know, most drivers pick the outside here so to get a good run going. You kept going with the inside. What was your, you know, reasoning for that? You're, or are you just good down there? No, there's a theory behind it. I'm not going to tell everybody why you know because i got to race against certain people on a weekly basis but uh there's a reason why i picked the bottom because i just feel like my lane to get around to the top on the next lap you know i always set myself up to try to go for the next corner you know i'll i'll do away with the first corner i'm trying more or less looking at the next corner and that's kind of why we do it it's you know i mean listen if we start at the top and then the guy gets on the bottom he's able to slide job you up you know, some guys are a little bit more aggressive than others. So if I feel just starting on the bottom, just a more protective line through the first lap or two. Yeah. You seem to have some trouble there. With, you know, lap cars were constantly in the way there for a while. Um, some of them. You know, listen, it's it was the same, too, I think, the whole time. But, uh, you know, we, we would get to them, and they'd get the mover flag. I kind of split them, and then they would go right back by me. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on here? And, and then you're trying to be easy on your stuff, and... You know, that's that's the hardest part, right? You're trying to lap cars, and you don't know where anybody's behind you. So, you know, what do you do, right? Well, how easy can you be, and how hard do you drive, you know? So, you know, talk about the last few laps. You know, uh, Stewie came on strong there at the end, and uh, he gave you a run there in the last couple laps. Yeah, like I thought I got away from Billy. Like I felt like the car was good enough. I hit a couple good laps, and then uh, I hung once or twice out of four little bit and i knew my tire was times, yeah but close. right the last couple laps i hung out of four and uh i go into one and next you know i see this boom black flash i'm like oh shit you know i said uh you know we got to turn it back down at least to protect that line and then i don't know where he went going into three but i wasn't letting him have the bottom on me again because i felt like if he had the bottom on me again then the race was over and then the same thing when we came back to one and two i believe right or was that for the checker i can't remember I know you went down low last lap. Yeah, so that was so that must have been coming for a white flag that he did that. So um, you just try to protect the slider, and that's really what you do here. You know, I'm not a big guy of sliding, sliding all the time because I feel like it wastes time on the track. But I feel like, you know, there's times to slide and times to protect. And I just was I was protecting the last two laps. I was just protecting the slider because I felt like he must have been taking it easy and probably had a better tire and better car at the end where you know I was starting to fall off the pace. Right. And, you know, you race here every week, and obviously, you know, you've been the king here for the last year and a half, but that's on a 358 spec and with American Racers. Tonight, you had a big block, and you had the Hoosiers on. I, I, get, I know your knowledge of the track helped you, but was there a big difference tonight? There was. I mean, what's weird is the big block almost feels a little better than the 358 right now um, on Hoosiers. So, you know, might be something to test down the road of what we can do with American Racers on this, but... uh um, you know, it's you got to get up on the wheel a little harder. You got to be a little bit more steady, or a little bit more straighter, and keep going that way. So, 
I thought uh, for the most part, this car was this actually this car ran here three quarters of the season last year, and then we put a big block in it to start this year. This one Port Royal, and I think this is the only other time it's been out right is uh, here. So this car is doing pretty good. I'm not complaining about any really cars we have because they're all doing good. It's just it's worth what a what a good team is and you know what all the sponsors and everybody good crew and everybody believes in me and that's pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, with the exception of the one you know the crash you had here opening at your Bridgeport. You, your season's been on quite a roll. Have you ever had a season open like this? And Not with the amount of money that we've won so far, no. Um, we've won where three or four in a row in the beginning on a regular Saturday nights, but never like this. So, you know, once in a while i got to pinch myself to make sure it's real. And, you know, it's a product of what comes out of the shop, and that's what I try to teach my son. I try to teach all the guys that, that are in the shop. I said, it's you work hard, good things happen. And uh, you learn that over the years. You know, it's... Uh, and I think my driving with the Bicknell cars and the good motors, I just think every, all the whole package is fitting me. I almost wish I could have had stuff like this five years ago and it might have been different. But, listen, I'm not complaining. We're about it now. And, you know, we're trying to have a strong year. So, uh, you know, let's just keep the ball rolling and come back here Saturday and have another strong run. Yeah. Yeah, last question. Uh, you know, a few years ago you did the Super Dirt Series Tour. And um, ever since that, you've – I'm not going to say mature as a driver, but you can tell the difference of your driving style since you've ran the Super Dirt Series. Well, when you run 100 lappers up north, if you're no good, you could be a bonsai bullet or whatever. It ain't, you ain't going nowhere. you got to be straight and smooth, and, and that's that's the difference, right? And that's why, like I told Yankowski and talked to Goulart and them guys and say, listen, it's you're going to go through growing pains. You're going to not do good a lot of them shows. But what it's going to do is you're going to learn, and when you come home, you're going to be that much better at home. Um, now, you got to still work hard. Now, you know, like that year at the Dirt Tour, we had shorter cars, and we struggled. It was the first year with four coils left side, so we really didn't have no idea what to do with shorter cars. And uh, that's kind of what it hurt our Dirt Tour year. I thought we had a great year that year um, as far as what we did. And uh, But, you know, as far as we ended up in the knowledge we got, you can't, no matter what car you have, that's the driving knowledge and, Obviously, you learn that, listen, work in the shop and make your car faster, and you don't have to beat and bang. You don't have to do anything. You're rough guys up. and I mean, you're always going to get it. I mean, you got to be aggressive, but, you know, there's times that I tried to overdrive the race car, and it's my own fault. I mean, you know, listen, I make mistakes. I'm out there to try to win. I'm not trying to wreck nobody, but, you know, that's what it teaches you to try to do. You know, it's just it makes a discipline on these 100 lappers because if you're not disciplined, you'd be lapped three times. So and that's that's really the huge difference. Ken Bruce, DirtTrackDigest.com. We're here with Ryan Godown, winner of the King of the Big Box Show. His first Super Series win.